guys welcome back to the channel and in this video we are going to go over a few Linux basic commands and like I said I mean if you're familiar with Linux shell and the commands feel free to skip it but before you skip uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that I can bring you more of these videos and more of this content okay all right so in Linux basically there are two type of commands uh, built-in I mean one set is called built-in and other is basically doesn't has any name but I call them external so external commands are actually packaged as a binary file on the system and they can be found in uh, sbin directory user bin and slash bin so these are the directories where you can find uh, the external commands built-in commands are actually the feature of a shell so I'll show you what built I mean what all built-in commands are available to you uh, but let's move on to first our first uh, command which we'll, we are going to look is ls so ls is basically the list so first let's look at the man page for ls so it says that list the directory content and each command takes a lot of options so we are not going to go over all the option but we'll look some of the major options let's go down and I'm, the option which i'm looking for is L, which is the long listing so we'll see this long listing and then a couple of more option R which is reverse so this is basically used for sorting it and then the last time last option is time so these three options we are going to look at so let's just exit out of this and as you saw I just ran ls command and it printed out the content of this directory which is the current directory so if you don't give it any option if the default option is the current directory but what if you want to list uh, the files in some other directory right so just do ls and let's say i want to list the content of etsy directory and you can see it has listed all the content of the list uh, etc directory but this is good i mean this is listing the name of the files but it's not giving you enough on information so to get in a I mean more information what we're going to do is we're going to do long listing and we're going to add L so now this gives you some good information about the permission about the owner when it was created and things like that right so it's giving you some basic information but this is very random it's not sorted okay so like you see there's an April 11 file May 3 file what if I want to sort it so that's where the other two options which we saw are going to come in so now i'm going to do is ls hyphen lrt and slash etc so now you can see these are sorted in the time they were created and they were modified right so the this is basically function of ls command to list the content of the directory moving on uh, the next command which you're going to look is cp so cp is basically uh, used to copy and I mean it stands for copy so let's look at the man page for CP so it is basically used to copy files and directories let's exit out uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch a file over here uh, say file 1 and let's just do the long listing so you can see file 1 is created and now what we are going to do is we are going to copy this file 1 to temp directory so now if I do the long listing of temp directory you can see file 1 has been copied to temp directory okay so this is basically what you few options which you uh, should know about in CP is uh, an option called CP hyphen R which does the recursive copying and it's basically used when you're copying a directory so you should use CP hyphen R when you're doing the copy a similar command to cp is mv which is which stands for move and it's in the simplest form it's just renaming file so like if you see we have a file file 1 and if i do file 1 to file 2 so you would see that this has it has renamed this file but the other option uh, the other use of mv is to basically move the file so let's do move file 2 slash temp so now you see that over here this file is gone 
this is not no more present it has been basically moved to a new location which is the temp directory right so you can see a file 2 is in temp directory this is basically the basic difference between cp and mv next command which you're going to look is touch so you saw me using touch so touch is basically used to create a file a blank file so let's do touch file 3 and you can see file 3 is created it's blank so there's no content in this file uh, to insert to create a file with the content you you used to i mean you have to use some uh, editor like vi which is the default editor editor for centos so if i do vi file 3 and i go into insert mode and insert some content hello world save it so now if i do cat on file 3 you see hello world so now file 3 has some content but to create a blank file you use touch next command which you are going to look is echo so echo is basically used to print anything on the standard output so if i do echo hello world you can see it just prints out what whatever the arguments are given to it and echo you would mostly find using echo in shell script so we are not talking about shell script right now we'll be dealing with shell script later but shell script is nothing it's just a chain of command which you just bundle up to automate small tasks so that's that's what shell scripts are all right next command which i'm going to look into is rm so rm stands for remove and it's basically used to remove files so let's do a man for rm so you can see it removes files and directories okay so let's do the listing here so i'm going to remove file 3 so it asks for a confirmation just say yes and you see the file 3 is gone and if you don't want to con i mean confirm every time so let's touch another file file 4 and let's do rm hyphen rf so this is basically forcefully removing the file or just do f so we don't want to do recursive so r stands for recursive and let's do file 4 and you see it didn't ask you for any uh, confirmation right now if you do ls your file 4 is gone next command which we are going to look into is cd or it's called change directory right so let's first look at the man page for cd so you did you notice anything like i did man page for cd but i am in the man page for built-ins because cd is one of those command which is present as built-in as well as an external binary as well all right so let's just exit out of it so if you don't pass anything to cd it will take you to the user's home directory so you can see right now i'm at my home but suppose if i want to go into the etc directory so i would just do cd slash etc and right now i'm in etc directory right so uh, one more thing so if i do ls hyphen lrt and just go a little up okay there are too many files okay yeah let me just well, i'm looking for okay. yeah so you see these uh, double dot and a single dot so the single dot represent the current working directory so if I do cd dot, nothing would change. I'm I'll still be in the same directory. But if I do cd dot dot, I would be moved to my parent directory, right? Which is by default is root. So for parent, my parent directory is root. So or slash as you call it. So I I move to slash directory. Okay. So this is basically what dot and double dot means. So I mean if I go to slash etc and let's see if i can go to any other directory let's go to rc.d all right so right now i'm in rc.d directory so if i want to go back to the c etc directory i would just do cd dot dot 
and I would be moved to one directory up. But if I want to go to my home directory from here, I would just do CD and I'll be back to my home directory. Uh, so you would ask why CD is present as a built-in command as well as uh, an external binary. So there's a thing behind it. Uh, what if, I mean, if I do alias, so before that, I want to tell you something about alias. So alias, basically you create your own shortcuts for commands. So for an example, like every time I need to do ls hyphen l for long listing, right? But if I create an alias for ls equal to, and I do ls hyphen l, right? So now I've created an alias and every time I just do alias, I'll be doing ls hyphen l. So it will be doing long listing for me, correct? So this is just to tell what alias command do. So another command which we covered, which we have to cover, we have which want which I wanted to cover is alias. So now we've covered alias as well. Okay, coming back to CD, why it's available as a built-in as well as an external binary is because what if I do alias CD equal to hello world. All right now if i do cd you can see command not found or rather i would alias it to echo hello world so it prints out it doesn't errors out and now if i do cd you can see every time it's printing hello world if i go to cd etc you can see it's doing nothing basically so to avoid that we have a built-in so now if i do build in cd slash etc you can see i moved to etc directory so this is why i mean you have cd command as an external binary as well as built-in so in case because for built-in the default uh, behavior will never change with alias i mean you cannot change the default behavior for the built-in command with alias but with for the binary commands you can change the default behavior right so let me just exit out of the shell and log back in as root so that uh, I can use CD again. So yeah, CD is working now. The next command which we are going to look into is make dir is basically used to create directories. So suppose I make dir called test and you can see I've created a dir. Let's cd into test and it's yeah. So I have changed my directory to test now what if you suppose you log into a system uh, traverse through multiple directories and you don't know where you are like if you see i don't know where exactly i am for this uh, linux has a very good command called pwd which basically gives you your current directory where you are so you can see i'm at root test so this is what pwd or present working directory is called as does okay uh, another command I wanted to show you is less is basically like a stream editor for you uh, basically I mean we it is used to view long files so it basically gives you a proper view of long files so if I go to etc directory I would have some long files so now if I do cat on passwd so you can see it's it, I mean it's not that long but it's pretty long right so instead of doing cat let's do less and you can see it gives you a better uh, view of the file and you can even do searching operation in less so if I want to search for user vacant so you can see it formed the search for me with less and I you can exit out with just Q and you exit out of less all right okay moving on uh, in uh, earlier linux version there was a command called more i mean i think it's still there yeah it's still there but less is basically a little more advanced version of more the next command uh, or probably the last command which i want to show you is grep so this is very important command for you and it's basically used for pattern matching and finding stuff so if you want to find some text in a file or if you want to find grab a file name you can do it using grep command okay so 
if I want to do, so I want to show you an example, say if I do ls hyphen lrt and let's grab past wt. So you can see it. there are two files with past wt name, past wt hyphen and past wt. Now if you want to grab some text, so you do grab, let's do recursive and look for text name vagrant in the past wd file and you can see it has grep it has found basically the content so this is what grep command does and it's very useful when you'll be doing shell scripting it it will come in very handy the grep command now let's talk about a special type of files uh, not exactly special but it's a way of creating hidden files in linux so if you remember if i do ls or ls hyphen l i get this right but if i do ls hyphen l a so you see you see something there are these files which are extra and these are basically uh, hidden files so if you want to create any hidden file in linux you just put a dot in front of it let me give you an example let's touch dot i'll create a file with my name and if I do ls hyphen l, you see I cannot see the file, right? But if I do ls hyphen la, or rather I'll clear the screen, ls hyphen la, you can see dot .tarik is there. So there's nothing special about the dot files, it's just that if you want to create hidden files, uh, you just put a dot in front of it. Uh, since I'm here, I'm talking about dot files, let's talk about one dot file which is bash rc. So first let's look at the content of the bash rc. So you can see some random stuff over there, some aliases which are there and there's a script, short script which is running, all right. And there's one command which I have inserted. So bash rc is basically, rc stand for run command. So this is the file which, I mean, Probably you use this file to run command when you start your shell interact interactively. So if for example I give you, suppose I log out of this root user and log back in again. So my shell started interactively and you can see it did the long listing of the file. Even when I didn't issue this command, I didn't issue ls hyphen l, right? That's because if you see the dot bash rc file in the end i just put this ls hyphen lrt so every time i log in every time i start this shell it will list out all the files in the current directory and if i would have given any directory in front of ls hyphen l it would have listed out the content of that directory so this this is basically when you use the bash rb file uh, suppose you want to export your variables which you want to be present every time uh, when you log in to your shell uh, this is where you use bash rc all right, uh, I think this is it for this video, guys. Yeah, I think you have a pretty good uh, grasp of uh, all the commands which I showed you. You understand what are built-in commands, what are external commands, and what exactly shell is. So these were the two videos which I wanted to do before we dive in into the real content. So yeah, uh, uh, thank you for watching, and please do subscribe to my channel.